I think a means of unifying greater activism that we don't pay enough attention to lies in developing a focus on complete and total war abolition. Elimination of all weapons, all militaries, all bases, all aircraft carriers, all missiles, all armed drones, all generals, all colonels, and if necessary, all senators from Arizona. <laughs> why, why war abolition? Ten, I'll give you the top ten reasons. Number one, it actually makes coherent sense. The reasonable position of opposing some wars and cheering for others, but cheering for the troops even in the bad wars, doesn't attract a lot of energy because it doesn't make any sense. Jeremy Corbyn just won votes, as Glenn just noted that Trump didn't lose votes, by making the argument that wars generate terrorism. They are counterproductive on their own terms. They endanger us rather than protecting us. They need to be replaced with diplomacy, aid, cooperation, the rule of law, the tools of nonviolence, the skills of de-escalation of conflict. Claiming that wars are sort of good but shouldn't be overdone makes no sense at all. What is the point if not to win them? And if wars make murder okay, why is torture so unacceptable? If bombs dropped by piloted planes are okay, what's wrong with drones? If anthrax is barbaric, why are white phosphorus and napalm so civilized? And if we are going to use war to end all wars, this has been failing for 100 years now, and pushing that idea on leftists reinforces it for everyone. None of this makes any sense which is one reason the top killer of U.S. troops is suicide. You know how to properly love troops. End all war and give them life options that don't make them want to kill themselves. Num <laughs> Number two, nuclear apocalypse is a growing danger on a par with climate chaos and it will continue to grow unless war abolition succeeds. Number three, the biggest destroyer of water, air, land, and atmosphere that we have is militarism. It is war or this planet. It is time to choose. Number four, war kills first and foremost by removing resources from where they are needed, including from famines and disease epidemics created by war. Any activism that seeks funding for any human or environmental needs has to look to ending war. It is where all the money is. More money every single year than could be taken once and only once from the billionaires. Number five, war creates secrecy, surveillance, classification of public business, warrantless spying on activists, patriotic lying, and illegal actions by secret agencies. Number six, war militarizes local police, making the public into an enemy. Number seven, war fuels just as it is fueled by racism, sexism, bigotry, hatred, and domestic violence. It teaches people to solve problems by shooting guns. Number eight, war divides humanity at a time when we must unite on major projects if we are going to survive, never mind prosper. Number nine, a movement to abolish all war all weapons and all atrocities that flow out of war can unite opponents of the crimes of one government or group with the opponents of the crimes of another. Without equating all crimes with each other, we can unite as opponents of war rather than of each other, as people rather than representatives of governments. Number 10, war is the primary thing this society does. It sucks down the majority of federal discretionary spending. Its promotion permeates our culture. It is the very foundation of the belief that ends can justify evil means. Taking on the myths that sell us war as necessary or inevitable or glorious is an ideal way of opening our minds to rethinking what we are doing on and to this little planet. So I have sat through speeches here at this conference where I have been told that we need violence. Studies of the past century of the use of violence and nonviolence in resistance to tyranny domestically and occupations have found that nonviolent, primarily nonviolent campaigns have succeeded over twice as many times. You have over twice the chance of success and those successes are almost universally far longer lasting than the successes you get 
from the use of violence. So you can prefer violence, but it's not a strategic preference. It's not a wise preference. It's not resorting to a stronger tool. It's resorting to a weaker tool. You are not going to build a movement against war by encouraging war. You are not going to defeat the greatest purveyor of violence on earth, the United States government, by swearing your loyalty to other corrupt governments. You are not going to avoid nuclear apocalypse without disarmament. You are not going to create a better 21st century using 19th century ideas and ideologies. You are not going to create the coalition that Ajamu said we need to create by mocking those activists closest to us and without showing people that we are on their side and that the enemy is not any group of human beings, but it is the evil outdated, obsolescent, destructive, immoral institution of war itself. That's our enemy. Let's defeat it.